Hi, Steve. Welcome to Automation Chat. It's always great to see you. Good to see you too, Teresa. I always enjoy talking about VFDs and VFD cable because there's always something to learn, something interesting. So before we dive in, though, briefly describe for me what Southwire does. Yeah, Southwire is a wire and cable manufacturer. We make everything from high voltage overhead lines to the cord that might be on your vacuum cleaner to all the wires that, that wire your household and everything in between. So um, we're the largest uh, North American manufacturer of, of wire and cable. And the area I like to focus on is our factory automation cable, specifically VFD cable. So tell me why VFD cable is important. Well, VFD cable solves a variety, a lot of issues, really weird issues that can happen with, uh, with drive systems. Um, one of the Rockwell engineers was telling me about a situation that has happened on more than one occasion where somebody installs a new drive without proper cabling. Uh, they turn on a drive and the fire alarm and the building goes off. And then they got to oh. exit the whole building and then they've got to, you know, re restart the whole production line. They start that drive system back up again and the fire alarm goes off and everybody has to exit the building. And it's, it's because of electromagnetic interference and drive cables can help mitigate that. And so why are VFD cables often terminated incorrectly? What's going on there? Well, the main reason is the VFD cable is, is a power cable, three-phase power, uh, but it's a shielded cable. And most electricians have never worked with a shielded power cable. They have no idea how to terminate this. We've seen some really strange and really creative methods of termination um, that really don't do much. If you don't terminate that cable properly, you may as well not have bought it because you, you literally can realize none of the benefits if you terminate that cable wrong. Well, how, how do they properly terminate a VFD cable? Well, the proper way to terminate, and we're talking about termination, we're primarily talking about termination of the cable shield. Um, what, what, what we've seen in the field is some people just cut it off at both ends. Well, that's, that does you no good at all. You, you've wasted your money buying that cable. Although it is a quick and easy way to terminate that shield, I guess. But the second method and most, most common thing that we see is people will terminate it at one end. They'll, they'll bond that shield maybe with a drain wire to ground at one end. And while that will reduce your radiated EMI, it does nothing to, to uh, control other types of EMI like common mode current, which also can cause issues. So the proper way to terminate that is to bond that shield at both ends to ground with what Rockwell calls a, a low impedance and high frequency termination. And uh, what about VFD cable ground wires? What's the best way to terminate those? Well, the ground wires are in that cable really just to comply with the NEC requirements. And those ground wires can be, if there's more than one bunched together, and they can just be landed at a ground terminal inside your drive and inside your motor. And uh, as we wrap up here, talk to me about how you terminate a VFD cable coming into and going out of intermediate termination boxes, I almost couldn't say that correctly, um, like quick disconnects? That's a great question. And we get that question more and more, and you will be seeing an app note from Southwire addressing that in the future. But quickly, what you want to do is you want to use that shield as a path for that common mode current to return to the drive. It gets pushed down the cable from the drive to the motor, and it's got to come back. So you need, so it's, it's got to come back to the drive so you need a continuous path in order for it to flow back. Um, what we see a lot of people do is they'll install THHN out of that quick disconnect to the drive. You don't wanna do that. You wanna use drive cable coming into it from the drive to the disconnect and then coming out of it from the disconnect to the motor. And then you wanna bond those sh shields together inside that cabinet. So you will want to take, and a good way to do it is with our, our termination kit, which, which we promote at, um, at Automation Fair and the like. Um, that termination kit has a braided tin copper um, uh, strap, which can be connected to both the input cable shield and the output cable shield. And then we wanna isolate that from the box itself. So put some shrink wrap over it or electrical tape, but that gives you a continuous path. You don't want to break that path. You want, you want to keep that path 
of the cable shield going all the way from the drive to the motor. So if, if there's one or two things you wish everybody understood about BFD cable termination that you run into with customers or um, users, what, what might that be? Um, the one or two things would be to, to, to just remember what Rockwell says in their installation guide, use a 360 degree termination, which is a large surface area termination because this is all high frequency noise. Uh, so you don't want to take that shield and scrunch it up into a pigtail and, and uh, bond it because then it's not large surface area. You want to keep that surface area large, use the, use the proper components, use a VFD termination kit or what's called an EMC cable gland to get that large surface area bonding of that shield at both ends. That's great. You know, Steve, this is really interesting and fun um, and I want to keep going, but we're just out of time. So um, I want to thank you for being here today and sharing your information with us. Anytime, Teresa. And listeners, check out our episode's description for links to more resources on how to take care of your cables. And as always, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast as much as we did. I'm Teresa Houck with The Journal Magazine, and we'll be talking to you later.